Many new entrants coming into the music business will often ask, when do they need to create an LLC for the record label or the record label idea that they have? First, we need to take a look at the liability issues that are at stake. We also need to take a look at the financial risk when starting. And we also need to take a look at this, the other opportunities you will miss by not doing this at the right time. Now, the problem is this business is very creative on the surface, which doesn't really allow people to dig down to the business underneath. You kind of got to dig through the dirt and the cracks and all that stuff to get to this business, which is why a lot of people have a lot of apprehensions about starting. But we want to address some of those apprehensions today. And I'll let you know that this process is harmless. So let's get into it right now on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham, let's hop right in. First things first is you cannot sign an artist to yourself. Now this is not signing to yourself, but you cannot sign an artist to yourself contractually. Creating a bond between two individuals means you become personally liable. And if you fail to uphold your end of the agreement, then we, we all know that things can go south. Despite its common practice, operating a record label as a sole proprietorship or DBA is very risky. Considering that many record labels fail within the first 12 months, personal liability is a significant risk. So think of all the potential lawsuits and the deterrent becomes clear. You know what I mean? Now there's so much more I can go into in depth about the contractual portion and why you don't want to sign an artist to yourself, but this is YouTube. I'll save that for something else. All right, intellectual property should not be held in your name. Holding intellectual property personally exposes you to lawsuits. So it's safer to hold these assets in a business entity until they accrue enough risk to warrant transfer to a holding company. Intellectual property is the cornerstone of your label's value and can be leveraged for funding. It also determines the company's worth when you're ready to sell. Therefore, it's crucial not to hold these assets in your name. And for those of you all who don't know what I mean by intellectual property, I'm just talking about the actual copyrights of the composition and of the master. So, and these are very valuable to you as a record label owner. You can say that you own these songs, but until the songs are registered as a copyright or for copyright, it doesn't mean anything when you're building your business. Now, money should flow into a business and not your hands. All money earned by the record label should be calculated and reported on balance sheets and profit and loss statements. This allows you to keep a cash flow analysis of your business to determine the financial health of the label. Now, it's very hard to do this when all of your money is dropping into a personal bank account without accounting software. So to achieve this separation, label owners should use separate bank accounts and credit cards for their business and keep meticulous records of all business transactions. Now, let me say this. I know for a lot of people, finances are not easy. Uh, so a good way to do this is to get the QuickBooks software and then you can hire an accountant within QuickBooks or CPA within QuickBooks. I have one that is not in QuickBooks. They do use QuickBooks, but they have appointed ones you can use for an inexpensive price as your money begins to build, okay? But there's a lot of things that you can do to uh, make this happen yourself, okay? And I recommend that you keep great account of the cash flow because you're gonna need it later, I promise you. Now, startup cost and organization cost write-offs. For record label operators, monitoring initial setup and organizational uh, expenses is essential. These expenses up to $10,000 can often be deducted offering potential tax savings. Accurate record keeping not only aids in financial health assessment, it does, but also impresses potential investors and helps in evaluating the return on initial investment. So if an investor comes in, and I'll, I'll even go so far as to say this for this whole video, they see that you own the copyrights, the company owns the copyrights, they see the actual money that it's taking to run the company and the actual startup expenses that you had to set this sucker up, they're beginning to feel more and more confident that you're going to be able to get them their money back. So when you go and you ask for angel investment, can I get 10,000? Can I get 20,000? I need this amount to do this for this. They're going to feel much, much better about investing in you and coming along for the ride. So all of this detailed information is very, very important. I know that you're a very creative person. This is very logistical. Find somebody that can help you with this, but it's going to help you in the long run. Now, Quality human capital. Yes, we're getting deep here. As your label begins to mature, it's important to have quality human capital, aka labor on staff or for hire that can execute the jobs needed 
for the label. The contractors and employees hired will be hired via contract most of the time. And if they are on contract, this labor contract becomes a valuable asset to you if you decide to step down as the owner or sell the business away. So what I'm saying is the employees that you bring in, and of course, I know you don't have the money to do that, but the help that you bring in or the subcontractors that you have, if you have that Rolodex of people who already have added creativity to your system, have added you know um, value to your system, and you have these people on file, when you transfer ownership to a manager, when the manager finally steps in, they don't have to change much. They can get in, they can start working, and they can start building. So if you keep a log of everybody that you use, quality human capital makes your DIY record label look amazing, okay? Now, what should I do first? Start the LLC first. You find that the structure for independent record labels is quite simple. You either have members and officers or you don't, and you have a lot of startup capital or you don't. That's just what it is. Now, how much does it cost to start? I always recommend labels to have at least $1,000 to build the structure. At least that's what I require when I take people through my course. And then from there, you can develop the type of contracts your label will do business on and then begin to seek out your prospects for signing. So when should I create a parent company? This is a very important question. I get people who watch my LLC video and they wanna do the parent company first. Let me break it down for you a little bit more. Creating a parent company is a strategic decision that label owners might consider in various scenarios, primarily for reasons related to growth, liability protection, financial management, and operational efficiency. I know that. The number one reason why is for diversification. Hear me out. If a business expands into different products, services, or markets that are distinct from its original focus, your original focus was the record label we make and we distribute records, okay? Songs and stuff. Then a parent company can help manage these diverse operations more effectively. What diverse operations? Merchandise. Uh, let's say the records started to make a lot of money and we need to separate the publishing division. So we have a records and publishing division. We have a merch division because merchandise is making a whole lot of money. Then we're starting to sell a lot of tickets to live shows and that needs to be its own thing for security purposes as well. And then we're starting to do a lot more endorsements for our social media pages. That needs a company as well. I always say you should do this when each category makes enough money to be taxed and has enough IP to be valuable on its own. This means it is not when you first start out. Stop creating the parent company if you're a record label owner when you first start out. I'm going on record to say this. You don't know if the record label will tank in the first 12 months. You don't know if you signed an artist, if they're just gonna leave. Artists, you don't know if you're gonna remain consistent. So don't go too advanced with your structures in the beginning. It's not worth the time and headache. Start with one LLC. So for those of you all who wanna really know how this is done without all the red flags and mix mismatching and lost information, let's get into it. Because I've created something called the 60 Day Record Label Course for artists. DIYers, producers, new music execs, songwriters, singer, anybody who want to start their music publishing company or their record label in 60 days or less without searching all over the internet for the how to's and getting all the wrong information and setting up your accounts with all the information put in the wrong way. I got you covered in one easy package. Let's get it done in 60 days. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a strong LLC foundation for your business to thrive on, get the funding it needs to survive, and then grow, and then we'll launch the parent company and all this other stuff. You'll learn how to play the game via contract, which is what you need anyway if you're gonna succeed in this game, because if you don't know how to play it via contract, somebody can get you easily in this game. And finally, you'll be set up to collect the domestic and international music publishing and record royalties without the middleman taking 15%, which is what I enjoy. All this stuff you see right down below is included. Click the link below this video to get started on this right now today. And if this is your first time watching the channel, grab the free stuff below, 10 major steps to increase your record label's profits. A free split sheet is included with this download. But if you do start the LLC first, which is what I want you to do. Your business will be poised for growth from the outset. You'll have better liability protection and intellectual property ownership. This is true. And you'll be able to open and operate your business much faster than if you don't start with an LLC. And this kind of comes into play when we're talking about accounting, funding, securing the assets and all of that stuff. OK, 
okay? But if you don't start the LLC first, then hopefully this is just a side hustle or DIY project for you, and I probably should have put personally there. Hopefully this is a personal thing, and maybe you're not planning to make more than $500,000 extra a month on your music, right? But here's, here's what you're gonna miss. You'll miss out on tracking startup expenses if you don't do it. The structure of your label will be organized or disorganized when you begin signing artists, if you do, and ultimately you'll face significant liability risk across the board. Even if it is just for you, you'll start to face the, the liability risk of what you actually created because some people do see business as warfare while others see it as no competition. So you gotta protect yourself out here. So hopefully this is where you're gonna start, all right? So in the beginning of this video, you might've been confused about what to do on when you should start this LLC or why you should start this LLC, but at least now you got a little bit more information to put yourself in a position of being the next level artist or DIY record label owner or new music exec so that you can win in this game. Music Money Makers, if you make music, you should always make money. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com, jump into the 60 day record label course below, download the free stuff below, book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com, and I'll see you next time. Peace.